You know, as long as I can remember, people have been asking me to make a crankbait tutorial here on my channel. And I kind of always shied away from the whole idea of making one because, you know, it's been done so many times already. And I kind of needed to find something new, uh, kind of a new angle to the whole crankbait thing. I think I found it. Let me introduce to you the Line True Crankbait. It has a detachable hook link and an action disc to give it movement in the water. So let's just uh, jump right into the video and I'll show you how to make one. Every new lure starts with the design. And I actually had this basic concept already in my mind since summertime and even made a couple of prototypes back then too, which actually did not work at all. Uh, the action was completely horrendous and they were blowing out all the time. But thankfully I'm pretty clever and I was able to get around with the issues that I had with the early prototypes. You know, it seems like every single time I make a video, I always forget to mention what kind of wood I'm using. And for this project, I'm using uh, actually a table leg uh, that I salvaged from the garbage. And <laughs> yeah, I, I'm ghetto like that. But uh, yeah, uh, I believe that this is a Apache wood. I'm pretty sure that it is because it smells like cat pee. But since this is from the garbage, uh, it actually could be cat pee. So, yeah, I know that's kind of gross. Uh, Any way you slice it, it smells pretty bad. So I already mentioned that I'm kind of ghetto sometimes. And uh, on top of that, I'm kind of lazy sometimes too, I have to admit. And it was actually raining outside when I was doing this. And I was like, eh, I don't want to go outside and saw this thing. And instead of doing that, I drilled a whole bunch of pilot holes and then I'm just going to use a bigger drill bit to basically connect all of these holes and make a channel that I can then disconnect much more easier. Even though I was not using my jigsaw for this project, I figured I would have to have some sort of tool to take care of the excess wood before I could actually start to shape the lure any further. So I just used my hand saw for that. And even though it took a little bit longer than um, it would have with a, with a pendulum saw or a jigsaw, it wasn't really that bad. So next up I moved on to shaping the bait and shaping the profile of the bait. And of course the easiest way to do that is to use a multi-tool and uh, if you see any of my other videos you know that I do love my multi-tool quite a bit. After I was done with my multi-tool, I then moved on to using a coarse sandpaper and uh, this was grit 60 and it suited my purpose uh, pretty much perfectly. So the wood that I was using was a little bit too thick for my liking and uh, I needed to saw off a little bit of it. And uh, before I could do that, I needed to mark where I can cut. Now it's time to do some speed cutting and uh, you know, while I was doing this I was thinking to myself, what do the films The Titanic and Sixth Sense have in common? And then it hit me. I see dead people. Yeah, I know, that's a terrible joke, let's just move on. <laughs> Uh, 
Next I needed to do some speed sanding and uh, if I would do this any faster I think it would probably catch on fire. So instead of drilling an actual hole through the body I figured it might be a better idea to have an actual tube that goes through the body and uh, the tube that I use here is actually a tube that they use for tube flies. As you can see here I've already marked the center line and now I'm going to do a couple of guidelines for me to use when I actually start to cut the hole that is going to hold the tube. I figured that the easiest way to get rid of the center part that was still remaining was to use my multi-tool to get rid of that. Now that I had the hole excavated I just needed to mix some 5 minute epoxy and glue the tubes in place and as you can see I left a little bit extra on the tubes because you know it's really easy to cut that off later on and really hard to add more. I'm sure you remember that in the beginning I said that I had some issues with the early prototypes and uh, I figured that I needed to add some keel weight in the body so I add a couple of grams of lead uh, in the body before I actually uh, covered it with uh, plastic putty here and uh, that seemed to uh, pretty much solve all of the issues that I had on the earlier prototypes. Next I started to work on the upper profile and I'm sure you can see here I didn't really mark anywhere what sort of taper I wanted to have and just basically eyeballed the whole thing. And you know there's not really that much material here to take off anyway so I didn't really feel like it was necessary to do any kind of um, pre-planning for the whole taper thing. When I had the rough shape of the taper that I wanted to have on the bait, I just uh, finished it off with some sanding paper. Now I can finally start to shape the bait a little bit more and uh, again I really didn't feel like marking any anywhere how much I needed to take off, I just basically eyeballed it and kind of like try to go for kind of like maybe oval uh, cross section if you will and um, I felt like that sort of um, profile would be the best kind for this sort of bait. But yeah basically I just take uh, off the bulk of the material with a knife first and then just sand it to my liking later on. I already knew going into this bait that I would have an issue with the clear coating because of the unusual design and I don't have anywhere to hook this thing into basically like you would with a normal bait. So I got around that issue by just inserting a metal wire through the tube and then just locking that into place with some hot glue. For the base coat I'm using a Cap Hard from Cap Coatings Finland 
and a mixture of titanium oxide, which is a pigment. I figured that since I haven't done any fold baits uh, in a long, long time, that uh, it was about time I make one. And uh, the foil I'm using here is actually uh, something called a panda foil, which it's basically a candy wrap. Next I'm going to attach uh, the foil with uh, some wood glue. Oh and uh, kids, don't sniff glue. You might end up like um, well, someone like Keith Richards who is basically immortal. Um, wait, that's actually endorsement for sniffing glue. Okay, just uh, forget I said anything. You know, I oftentimes see people struggling with foiled baits and wrinkles in particular. And uh, getting around that issue is quite simple. You just take it slow and don't rush into things. Before painting the baits I need to dip them into clear coat to make sure that the surfaces are nice and smooth and ready for paint. And uh, I'm using cap coatings hard here, again minus the uh, titanium oxide. I start off the paint job with fading out the foil with uh, some white. So my idea is to add uh, kind of like a scale effect on this bait later on, but first I need to lay down a coat of black to make the scales jump out a little bit more. I've wrapped the bait with uh, tulle fabric and I'm going to spray some pearlescent blue to simulate the scales. Now I'm blending the scales to the back with some a uh, different shade of blue. With uh, some silver paint and help from uh, stencils that I made for this particular bait, I'm going to now paint the gill plates. Seems like I can't make a single bait without pectoral fins, so that's what I'm painting next. And I'm using this uh, piece of plastic to help me simulate the, the rays in the fins.
to finish off the bait I decided to add a little bit of orange on the belly. Before I could add a final coat of epoxy on the baits and finish them off, I just needed to add a couple of eyes on the baits. And I have to say, making these really small eyes is pretty difficult for someone like me who has basically sausages for fingers. I wanted to have a really tough and durable last coat of epoxy on the baits, so I decided to just clear coat them with a proper epoxy rather than just using the lure varnish that I was using earlier. I felt like that just wasn't cutting it because mostly I'm going to be catching pike with these, so the coat has to be very durable. Now that the epoxy has cured enough for me to handle these baits, um, I can take off the metal wire and trim off the ends of the tube. Taking new baits out for a test run is always the most exciting part of lure making and even though the weather was quite arctic and pretty windy as you can hear from the next clips, I couldn't help myself but to go out and give it a try. Right, first fish on. And it seems like a pretty decent fish too. From what I usually get from here. Uh, it's maybe a, maybe a kilo fish. Oop, oop, come on, come on. Settle down. It's really windy out here, so I think I'm gonna have to take it from here. Wow, what a beautiful colors this one has. Actually, foul hooked it, <laughs> but uh, I definitely wanted to hit it, that's for sure. This guy back in in his watery home. Let's get another, yeah, another fish on. Oh. It's actually a little bit bigger than the other one. Just a tiny bit. Uh, this one is actually hooked from the mouth. <laughs> uh, it seems like it's uh, just a tiny bit bigger than the other one. I'm not liking the wind here. It's super, super windy out here today. It seems like it has a deformed fin. Yeah, another nice, nice fish. Look at the fin there. 
this guy has seen some shit. That's for sure. But uh, let's get it back. big but you know, it's a fish and it seems like the the hook system is actually working really well I haven't lost a single fish yet so that's awesome So I wanted to add an additional action test uh, clip here in the end to really showcase the action a little bit better because honestly you cannot see anything in those uh, clips that I shot earlier when I was catching those pikes because it was way too windy for that. And uh, yeah, actually end up catching a couple of more fish after the third one, but um, unfortunately my action camera's battery died so I didn't get those on film. But um, yeah, as you can see the action is pretty erratic, kind of like all over the place very similar to those baits that have a uh, saddle lip on them you know those baits that people have been using here in Finland since the 80s I have to say I'm pretty impressed how this uh, bait worked and how well it actually performs in water uh, I noticed that you don't have to tune this at all in any way which is pretty incredible uh, but yeah hope you guys enjoyed the video um, like the video if you did and uh, I'll see you guys on the next one